If you are seeking happiness and acceptance but not finding it in the world, this podcast shows you how to change everything in your life, soul, mind, and body. You can change anything with God. Your prayer life, fighting the spiritual battle, controlling your thoughts, and changing your body. Becoming exactly who God created you to be. Joyful, loving, peaceful, with a strong will and a healthy body. Each day on Reality Reflections with Kendra Von Esch, that's me, we will walk the journey together. I will be here to support and love you through the good times and the bad as I share the ups and downs of my life and help you fight the battles in yours. I love you all. Find something more with God, soul, mind, and body, and have a blessed and inspired day. The lamp of your eye really does mean what your soul is like. I'm back outside, by the way. It didn't really work so good inside, and it took me forever to upload when I recorded and then had to come out. Long story. But let's talk about our eyes. Are our eyes light or are they dark? Why in the world am I talking about eyes? <laughs> let's read the last part of the gospel today, Matthew 6. The lamp of the body is the eye. If your eye is sound, your whole body will be filled with light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be in darkness. If the light in you is darkness, how great the darkness be. Oh, how great will the darkness be. So I think about that phrase, the eyes are the windows to the soul. Eye contact. Let's just go through some of these things. When you're listening to someone and you're in person, hopefully you're giving them eye contact. It's a huge sign that you are listening, that you care enough not to be looking around, not to be gazing down at your phone. All of us have had a person who is either talking too much, talking gibberish, wasting our time, where we were looking around, looking down, not making eye contact. It's really important if we're in business to do that. If we're having a serious conversation to do that, when we are caught in a lie or someone is calling us out on something, a lot of the time we turn our eyes away from shame or embarrassment. Now let's talk about what we do with our eyes. Are you looking at that person coming down the hallway and you immediately gaze away and start walking in the other direction because Bob pushes every button that you have? Are you looking at people lustfully or meanly or angrily? Is that even a word? <laughs> you're looking at them and you're, you're mad at them. Do you see people immediately and judge them? Put them in a box. I used to say that that was how I used to be. I would look at you. I would size you up. Check out your hair, your face, your clothes. And then I would put you in a box. If you were wearing a nice outfit or a good suit and your hair was beautiful and maybe if you were a woman, your makeup was great and you held yourself together and you looked like what the world told you you should look like to show that you are perfect and successful, then I would put you in that perfect and successful box and I would want to talk to you. I would want to be like you. But if you are walking around with pink and blue hair, piercings in and out of your nose and all over your face, your pants hanging down your butt with your underwear showing, or you have no teeth, your hair is unkempt, you're dirty. How am I judging you now? How do I look at you with my eyes? Remember, our eyes are the windows to our souls. 
So am I looking at that person just the same? Am I disgusted with them? Am I judging them, putting them in a very low box and not even giving them eye contact or wishing them a great day? You know, the worst thing that has happened to this world is COVID and those stupid masks. How many times do you go, even if you're not wearing a mask, right by a person in the parking lot, in the grocery store, wherever you're running errands, and you don't even look at one another? That was from those stupid masks. It didn't just put us under a muzzle. It changed our reaction to people. So try, please, to bust that out. Oh, man, I didn't, I forgot. I needed to have someone call me, so I had my volume on. Sorry, everyone. So when you're walking by someone and they're just looking down or not giving you any eye contact, say, hi, how you doing? Or have a great day or something to snap them out of it. It's so horrible what that experience has done to humanity. And if they have pink, blue, green, or a rainbow colored hair, if they are completely the dressing the opposite way of their genetics and their gender and their sex, we still have to love them. And loving someone is making that eye contact with them. I mean, I even feel weird when I'm sitting in, you know, my, a YouTube video and someone is not looking in the camera. I think you've probably seen some of mine where I thought that the lens was on the other side. <laughs> so I'm looking away from you. People do that all the time. And it's through a video. And we still get weirded out because they're not looking at us. Are you looking at someone lustfully? Are you looking at what you can do to them? I mean, sometimes we have to turn our eyes away, especially for those people who are dressing very, barely dressing. Let me just say that. I have seen college girls, high school girls, wearing clothes that show everything, shorts up to their butt cheeks, their stomach is totally showing. I mean, how do you not expect people, men, to look at you lustfully? And I'm not saying the old, it's her fault because of what she wore, like if they're raped or something, but it sure doesn't help if you're taunting and tantalizing others. I never understood the dress. I remember when I first started in ministry, I was like, I am not going to be like those people who wear dresses down to the floor, long sleeve shirts, no makeup. Like I am not going to be that person. And a few times looking back, I wish I could take those pictures away. I had just a little shell that went under a blazer that was a little bit low cut. I didn't have big boobs. I didn't have cleavage, but it was certainly a low cut top. And I'm totally different with my clothes now. I don't need to be dressing, barely dressing, leaving nothing to the imagination. Men too. I find myself out walking and there's this dude who runs. He's got a great body, but the shorts are like so short. It's kind of creepy actually. But I found myself just looking at his body, his lower body, and then I have to turn my eyes away. It's one thing to appreciate that person's in shape body, to appreciate someone who's beautiful, good looking, seems to have a very healthy physique. You can look and appreciate, but when you start like gawking <laughs> and maybe thinking lustful thoughts, which I was not about that guy, but I had to turn my eyes because I was like, okay, now I am gawking at this guy. What we do with our eyes and how those eyes match our thoughts. 
So now, and I'm telling you, I get a lot of opportunities down here in Tennessee to see those people who are not beautifully perfect, like I saw in corporate America. People who are salt of the earth, even though they don't look like me or act like me or have the same blessing upbringing as I have. They are wonderful people. They are kind. They would do anything for you. So that has been a beautiful observation, a beautiful change in the way in which I see people. And I have to make sure that I make eye contact more, especially with people who are African-American, because there's this thing where we just don't look at each other. I've noticed, at least. I come out of my car, I go fill up my gas, and I'm not looking at these people because they are God's children. And there are times when I'm like, well, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't talk to them. Maybe they don't want, you know, me to talk to them or something or say hi or whatever. Or maybe they feel like I'm pushing it or I'm faking it because of all this racial stuff that's going on. I don't know, but I have to do a better job of looking people in the eye and seeing how much they are God's children. You know, it's like it's easy to love and the people who are just like you, it's harder to love and see people as God's children when they hurt you, they harm you. We just talked about forgiveness yesterday. So the eyes truly are the windows to the soul. And when the eyes are dark, the darkness is super dark. So be careful. Remember the Bible verse where Jesus said, if you have looked lustfully at someone, you've already committed adultery in your heart. I know a lot of people say, hey, you don't sin until you do the act. But with our eyes and with our imaginations, we can have that physical thing in our minds. We can imagine that happening with that person. And that is why we need to control our thoughts. And we need to be aware of when we are seeking or looking or gawking at someone in a non-pure way. Again, all about paying attention, my friends. <laughs> all about paying attention. Because once we catch ourselves, we could be like, oh, and look away. Just like I did with that guy with the super short shorts. I mean, it was weird. I was like, is his junk going to fall out of there? I mean, that's how short those shorts were. <laughs> Sorry, but that was what was going through my mind. And then I'm looking, waiting for the junk to fall out. And I'm like, wait a minute, what am I doing? You know, like that is just so weird, so wrong. Okay, <laughs> let's pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, you are the only one that can change our desires. You are the only one who can make us aware of the sinful ways that we look at people, that we think about people, because what goes into our eyes matters. Help us to identify those movies, those books, those podcasts that are not holy and darken our eyes, filled with murder and sex and lying and deceit, embezzlement and stealing. Lord, help everyone open their eyes like you did to me when I was watching the soap opera Days of Our Lives for over 25 years. And then you opened my eyes to how disgusting and impure it was. And what a colossal waste of my time. Help us to be aware of what we see and how we use our eyes and to make sure that we look at everyone with kindness and contact with them through their souls, their eyes, which lead to their souls. And now we are going to pray for all of the holy souls in purgatory by name.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, please pray for us. Help us to have pure, innocent, loving, caring eyes for others and also for our own soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. All righty, everyone. Custody of the eyes. It's a thing. And use your eyes to love. Look at people. Snap them out of their own little selfish way. We need to be human beings who interact and who love each other, even though we don't know each other. I have heard from people when I say something, like there was this one girl who was taking the grocery carts. All my stuff happens at the grocery store. I don't know why. But she's taking all the grocery carts inside. She's got this huge lane. And when I went in, I saw her. She didn't smile. She didn't say anything, but she was beautiful. And she was an African-American girl. And I went in, got some ice for my dad's memorial party. And then I came out and she was coming back in. I'm like, I'm so glad I saw you again. I'm like, you are so beautiful. And then she smiled. And oh my gosh, the smile that she had and the teeth, they were beautiful. Then I said, oh my goodness. And now with that smile, you are fabulous. And she's like, thank you. Just that little thing can make someone's day. Now maybe she will smile more. You know, I mean, she was just a a bump on a log, like frumpy, wasn't even making eye contact or doing anything. And I was like, oh, I'm so glad I saw you again. I should have said this when I first saw you. Just little things like that. Even have a blessed day when they're walking by you can matter. You never know what's going on in that person's life and how much your words Your eye contact and your love, your genuine love, can make a difference. All righty, everyone. I love you all so much. If I could see you through this (laughs) podcast, I would look you square in the eyes. And you would know it. You'd know I meant it. Have a blessed. Oh, wait. Find something more with God. (laughs) Soul, mind, and body. Remember, soul first. Your eyes are the windows to your soul. Now have a blessed and inspired day.